three. So once again, greetings from sunny Sunshine Canyon in Colorado with our dramatic backdrop and ominous clouds. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, core and its functions and sort of like where people go wrong with core. Okay. Um, so we all know about core strength or core stability. Um, but it is interesting. I, I don't like those words. I wish we'd come up with a better word. What about core integrity or core intelligence or core fluidity? Um, uh, so anyway, th here's the theme. Core can be used for, for different functions. And one is anti-rotation. So if I push you this way, you rotate against me, which is often used in training. Um, another is the effect of bracing with the core. Um, you know, or sort of, sort of like a core activation. You know, we get this, this tight core, stabilizing core. But remember, um, anti-rotation or th this ability to resist being pushed is there so if I get bumped, I don't fall over. And so it's a natural response and we need that response, okay? And a brace core typically we'll use for lifting very heavy things. We will sort of brace out with a core or you want to receive a blow to the stomach, okay? But that is not the case with endurance athletes. We need a core that helps us move because we've got muscles that can contract and relax. And the more power and movement we can generate centrally, um, the more that's amplified in our extremities. So like a small movement here becomes a large movement there. So we want to move from the center out and I'll do a video on that. Okay. Um, if you walk around with an engaged core, or brace core, you're basically telling your body you're about to be punched <laughs> or something heavy is about to drop on your shoulders. Okay. And if you walk around, sorry, that's a, like a horse fly. We don't want that. Um, and if we walk around with a resisted core, you're kind of in, um, Anticipating an external event and both of those will operate operate your nervous system and make you uptight and tense um, And this might not apply to you, but there are some people that will brace and engage their core at a standing desk now All that bracing and engaging is gonna make you an uptight anxious person and I'd hate to read you emails, okay um, and there's also this notion of um, We need to breathe and so if you engage your core tighten your core you restrict breathing or your breathing will come up into your shoulders and then you're running around and you've got no neck and tall shoulders because your core is embraced and shut down. Okay. And most people as well think of their core. They don't think of the back, the sides, um, all these other sort of the deep core, the external core. It seems, you know, it's pretty much ab reduced. Um, also pulls your head forward and pulls you into flexion. You can become a flexion biased athlete. And most of the time we want to be an extension biased athlete. And there's also a synergy. When my stomach contracts, my back tends to lengthen. And if my back contracts, my belly expands and that's healthy. Bracing and tightening, both of them will simply compress your spine and get you into a whole lot of trouble. Okay, so there's a whole lot of thoughts on core and why we want to be fluid in our movement and you don't want to hold tension in your core. Not to say you can't have a strong core. Um, and one more element of this, even boxers, they'll shake out the tension in their body because that allows them to be more fluid in movement and also they can actually take an impact. So as the, they can absorb the blow. Um, yeah, you've got to protect your stomach, um, but braced and stiff people don't handle trauma very well. Okay, so <laughs> before I get bitten, uh, please like, share, subscribe, do all the, the important things, and um, we'll keep making a lot of content with uh, camera green and dramatic backdrops from sunny Colorado.